Hey all, and welcome to this short video. Now, in five minutes, I would like to introduce you to the gen environment within Max. So, the gen environment is basically a programming language of its own within Max, and we can find it inside those five objects. Now, the gen environment can be used for the main applications of Max, which are working with visuals, working with the audio, and working with simple numbers. Now, for the visuals, we got these objects here that work respectively with matrices and with textures for the ggLpx. For the audio, we got the gen tilde, and for max numbers, we got the gen object. There is also the jitpx then that also works with matrices, but it's rarely used. So, how do these objects work? Basically, if we lock the patch and double click on one of them, uh, we can see that it opens another window, which looks like a sub-patch, but it's actually not. Uh, we are now inside a gen environment that has different objects from Max and also works in a slightly different way. So there are all a set of rules that apply only to the gen environment. And what can we do with it? Well, basically we can create complex algorithms by using mathematical and logical operators. So especially when working with the visuals, so for example with ggLpx and ggen, it's very important to have all the mathematical operations available in a very compact and fast way. And the gen environment allows us to do that. Uh, as you can see, it has uh, basically all the possible mathematical operators and also allows us to work with the vectors, which is something that is very useful when working with computer graphics and video processing. Now the gen tilde object and the gen one they work in a slightly different way, so we are not going to see them. As you may know, I'm mostly proficient with the visual side of Max, so the jitter side, and that's why I'm going to show you what we can achieve using the JIT gen and the ggLpx objects. So I have prepared five patches for you, and let's start with the first one. So the first patch consists on a flocking algorithm. Um, this algorithm I took from the Nature of Code book from Daniel Schiffman, which is a great book. And let's check the patch. Now, as you can see, there are very few objects. And that's because the whole algorithm is written inside JITGen. If I open JITGen with the open message, you can see that the algorithm is contained within uh, this object, which is called the code box, and is also written using uh, written coding. And that's very useful, especially when we got complex and long algorithms and also because it allows us to create for loops, which is something that we could not do in the normal gen environment, and that's actually necessary for a lot of algorithms. So we can also interact with our algorithm from the patch by sending some parameters to the gen environment, which we define ourselves. So it's like if we are creating our own attributes for the gen object, and so we can interact with the algorithm inside and change its behavior. So pretty cool. Let's go to the next patch. This patch is simply mixing between two videos using the ggLpx object, which uses uh, textures, as we saw before. So let's start the mix. And that's the effect that we create. The whole algorithm is contained inside the ggLpx. Cool, let's check the next patch. So this is an audio reactive patch in which a mesh is modified from within JITGen and is interacting with some audio input. The algorithm is a bit messy, but uh, it's just a bunch of logical and mathematical gen operators. So let's now go to the fourth patch. This uses the Kinect and it modifies the point cloud generated by the Kinect again with an audio input. So as you can see, this is my Kinect standing there on my side. And it's in fact a very simple algorithm. We are simply distorting the zeta value of the point cloud using an audio input, so using the audio amplitude. And let's go now to the final one and fifth one, which is probably my favorite. And this uh, uh, uses JITGen to procedurally create a shape. So we start from the vertices of a cylinder and then applying some mathematical and logical operations, um, we create a gear. And that's kind of my favorite use of the JITGen object, this whole kind of problem solving and logical thinking. And since the shape is completely procedurally created, we can modify it using some external parameters and we can modify basically every part of it. So that's also another possibility of the JITGen environment. Could we have done all these things by simply using max objects? Probably yes, some of them definitely not. But we would have much more massive patches and also the gen environment is optimized. So from a performance standpoint, it's better to use a gen object instead of using several max objects. So cool, this was my little introduction to JITGen. I hope I have uh, hyped you up on the subject 
and it's a beautiful world once you get in it's very difficult to get out so i wish you a happy maxing and see you soon ciao